Eight and one run with complimentary plays after cashing in with Sunday's lone selection with you Darvish and the Texas Rangers. Two nothing at Washington. Free picks coming your way in just a moment on the Mets, Phillies, and Red Sox Indians. What's a rundown of who's hot and who's not before I get going here for this Monday video report? However, guys, quick little personal story from you. Today is a day that I remember really was the turning point that shaped my gambling and handicapping philosophy in one particular aspect. Back on this day in, in 1988, I had just finished the worst betting week of my life in baseball, a week that was so bad that I didn't bet baseball for the rest of the season. Now, coming from a guy who tells you all the time, it's the easiest sport to bet. It's the sport that I absolutely excel in and the sport that I know with 100% certainty that you can always make money if you're willing to put in the time during the dog's days of summer. Well, that probably comes as somewhat of a surprise, but here's the deal. Back that year, first six weeks of the season, I just made money. I mean, it was easy. I was betting along with a friend of mine who was a fellow reporter back in Philadelphia. Um, you know, he was into baseball as well, but the majority of the plays, I'd say 80 to 85% of the plays that we were betting each night together were my selections. Every now and then he'd come up with a good play, but basically it was my plays. And I had built a nice little bankroll. Now remember, back in these days, I'm making like $20,000 a year, okay? So, you know, big bets for me back then were $25, $50 max. I just didn't have that type of cash sitting around. I know what you guys, uh, you can relate to this, okay? So after this nice little windfall and build up a nice little bankroll, and I had come off an awful football season, I'd gotten some of my money back that year in the NBA playoffs and in college basketball, but baseball was really replenishing the bankroll that I needed going into the next football season. So my friend comes up with this idea. He says, let's do a double up theory. He had this system. He said, let's pick six teams and he already had the team, six teams that will not lose all games this week. And just keep betting them. If they lose, we double up the bet. We get the money back. I should have thought it out because the double up strategy didn't even work. And that system didn't even make sense because baseball odds. This isn't like football, the juice, you know, I mean, baseball odds will kill you. So consequently, I decided, hey, it's my own fault. I'm a big guy. I'm a man. I go ahead and I say, let's go for it because we had this bankroll build up. The six teams that he picked, five of them that week lost at least five consecutive games. Okay. By day number six, I was it. I was bankrupt. I had nothing left. I mean, it was just the most dumbass thing I've ever done in my life. He went one more day and lost again. So on this day, all those years ago, I had to uh, pay my guy. I had to meet Danny and pay him up. Uh, you know, my deficit for the week was a little over $1,300. My friend's deficit for the week was a little over $1,700. He didn't have the money to pay it. Um, so I actually ended up going to the bank and getting a with a cash advance on my visa to front him the money. That's how bad of a week again. You know, making $20,000, you lose $13,000, $1,300 in a week when you're bankroll. Yeah, it's a, I had a bankroll. But remember, as I told you, you know, I had lost a fortune in football the previous year. It was devastating. And I learned something then. One, it led to my golden rule gambling. Never bet more than you can afford to lose. And then I'll forever keep you out of the financial abyss that you could be facing otherwise. And number two, never buy into systems. I hear a lot of handicappers and a lot of gamblers saying, well, I've got these three systems that really lead me to the... Seriously? Three systems? Oh, and the combined, they really give me a hedge play on so-and-so? systems, really, whatever system you have, I assure you, I can do a computer search and come up with an opposite system. Systems are ridiculous. Do the research. If you're not doing the research, find a handicapper who does, does the research for you. That's the whole point of this game. If you don't have the time and you still want to bet recreationally, then you got to find somebody who can guide you. You wouldn't walk to the man on the street and say, hey, I've got $10,000 to invest. Which mutual fund do you think I should go in? You go to a financial advisor. There is no difference. Don't overfall victim either to an 800 salesperson who, after winning you maybe a couple of games, says to you, Hey, I need a little more money to go get some more information. I got to buy some more information. What's he buying? He's buying braces for his children, maybe? I mean, what is he really buying? What information can he buy? Can we go to 7-Eleven and get it? Because I can't get that information. There's no information. Gamblers, 
consumers, sometimes you're so gullible. Again, I run these sites, total transparency. What you see is what you get. You know, So I stand up here and tell you yesterday, hey, I was the big featured play on the site, the hand price play of the day. I had to play my third 15 dime play of the season, which matched my strongest baseball release of my career. Guess what? The Dodgers sucked last night. Now, thankfully, I had them on the run line, so it minimized the damage. Nice if you're going to lose a play of any type that it's an underdog in baseball, but still, a win is a win, a loss is a loss. There is no in-between. But you also know what I always say, that yesterday does not affect how I play tomorrow. The outcome, whether positive or negative, never affects how I play the following day. My bankroll may dictate it, but otherwise the thought process is not affected. So that's the bottom line, guys. You know, again, I think the biggest thing, the moral of the story, shall we say, is you never bet more than you can afford to lose. Now, listen. You know, I look at the baseball card here, and we've only got baseball the next couple of days. There are a lot of hot handicappers here at the site that have done exceptionally well. One of them is uh, Trace Adams, who uh, today has the second ever 2000 star W wager baseball play of his career. Now, he hit the first one two Thursdays ago. It was St. Louis Cardinals on the run line as a 145 underdog. You got that as a half price play of the day. And of course, he just hit his first ever 2000 star play in basketball when he gave you the Spurs in game number six on Saturday at Oklahoma City. Well, this play is just as strong as those. And keep in mind, normally a top rated play for him is a 1000 star release, of which he had the Spurs on Thursday. And Friday in games five and six against Thunder and the Heat in game number six against Indiana on Friday night. This play is twice as powerful as it goes for winning day number 15 out of 21. And you get it for half price simply by using coupon code TRIO, T-R-I-O. TRIO is the coupon code to get it as the half price play of the day. Now, the charity play of the week. It was an interesting play yesterday because Matt Rivers released it. I went into the back door of the system and I saw he put it live at 2.49 Eastern time in the morning. And at the time, Minnesota and the New York Yankees, the over under in that game was nine and he had the under. Well, at about 9.30 yesterday morning, Eastern time, that line dropped to eight and a half. Well, here's the interesting thing. About 35, actually, it was almost 38% of you that got that play got it before 9 o'clock. So for those of you that got it, you pushed. For those of you afterwards, you lost. Very strange. But listen, so I counted it as a loss, okay? I mean, it really didn't help us at all that, you know, the Minnesota Twins scored six runs in the ninth inning. Seriously, nine runs in the top of the sixth, ninth inning, or six runs in the top of the ninth inning. See, I'm juxtaposing the numbers. That's how shocked I was in that contest. I mean, you just don't think you're going to lose a total with a team scoring six runs in the top of the ninth inning, on the road, no less, okay? But here's the deal. Since it was a push for some, a loss for others, I decided, what the hell? I saw Jeff Benton has a big play today, and you know how good he has been with his total selections. You know how good he has been with his plays overall because you've gotten so many of them at discounted prices. I am re-releasing the charity play of the week again today. What the heck? I can do whatever I want. I run the sites. It's my job. It's my business. It's a charity play of the week winner number 36 out of 58 and 8 out of 10. Jeff Benton, 50 dime winner number 32 out of 52 is AL total of the month, the Mariners and and the Yankees. Uh, just as strong as Thursday's Game 5 total winner in the Western Conference Finals with the Spurs Thunder staying under. A pick you got for just seven seventy seven, And uh, he had a 59 winner in baseball yesterday, I believe, as well. I think maybe the Baltimore Orioles over Houston. This play is equals that one. He has won 34 of 52 winning days. $10 betters up $10,780 in that stretch. You've gotten 32 of those picks at huge discounted prices, and today you get it for free simply by using the coupon code CHARITY, C-H-A-R-I-T-Y, CHARITY. You get it for free. Uh, one other guy that has a big play today, Scott Delaney, uh, who's on a 16-4 and four run over the past eight days with his premium and free picks combined. Uh, $10 better as hell. They've made $4,850 just over the past eight days. 109 winner number 59 out of 92 in his third since Friday. His major league run line blowout of the year, part number two. Uh, he says this is another game that wins by at least four runs. He had one yesterday with the Red Sox, 4 nothing over Tampa Bay as a 109 play. That was a uh, nice run line winner. And he had a 109 play on the Heat, Indiana, over on uh, Friday night. You got that as the $9 payday selection that day. So that's what Scott Delaney has going today. Now, let's get to your free selections. The first one, I'll ride the Red Sox minus $1.15 at Cleveland because, listen, Red Sox Nation, you owe me one. 
You own me one. Because when your team had lost 10 straight games, I went against them looking for them to lose the 11th consecutive game. And I took the Atlanta Braves and they jumped out to a 6-1 lead in the opener of that series in Atlanta. And then your Red Sox came back and won that game. It cost me. But seriously, you owe me something out there, Red Sox Nation, because since then, well, that started your team's turnaround. They have now won seven in a row. So hell, I'll take them tonight. Maybe this will be like the curse. Maybe this will be like the curse of the Red Sox. I'm going to take Boston tonight, and they're going to lose 13 of their next 14. It could happen. I could be that guy. Anyway, Red Sox going with John Lackey. He's 4-1 and with a 2.27 earned run average in his last seven starts. Uh, 13 in the third score list in his last two starts. You know, one time Red Sox farmhand Justin Masterson gets the call for Cleveland. He has really struggled. 4.72 earned run average in four home starts this is Houston. Uh, last five starts, he's given up 22 runs. 29 hits and walks 17 batters in 24 and two-third innings. So let's do the math. That's 46 base runners in 24 and two-third innings in his last five starts. Um, he's lost his last three starts against the Red Sox. Is he already in those three? How about 7.95? Uh, the Indians, yes, they did come off a three-game sweep of the Rockies at home, but remember, this is the same team that had scored uh, scored uh, seven runs in losing their previous four games before the Rockies came to town. Uh, Boston went seven and one in the series a year ago. It's won four in a row at Cleveland. I'm going to go with the Red Sox. Uh, even though, even though, and I just want to play devil's advocate here for just one minute, even though the Red Sox have only scored 12 runs in Lackey's last five starts and five of those came in one of them, seven in the other four, eh, has me a little worried, but still it's a pretty cheap price and the Red Sox are playing well. I like the Red Sox tonight. Your other play in game five of a series that has just gone extra innings each of the last three days, Mets and the Phillies, two teams that have exhausted bullpens, but the Phillies by far the more, by far the more exhausted. They've had to turn to minor league call-ups, especially with Mike Adams, one of the most durable relievers this year, who was only one year removed from having major surgery, now being bothered with some soreness. Bartello Colon getting the call for the Mets. He is finally resembling the pitcher that pitched so well for the A's the last couple of years. He's won his last two starts, coming off seven and a third shutout innings against the Pirates, in which he struck out nine and allowed just five hits. And the road start prior to that one, eight innings at Washington in the win, five hits and two runs, and five strikeouts in that one. So a 1.17 earned run average in his last two starts, compared to 8.31 in his previous three. I say he is definitely on the buy wagon for me. Roberto Hernandez going for the Phillies. If you're looking for a long outing, and I'm sure the Phillies would like that, you ain't going to get it from Roberto Hernandez. His last two starts, four runs in 12 innings, okay? But he walked nine batters in those 12 innings. Uh, Mets have won eight out of nine at Philadelphia. They've won five of their last six overall. They've won six of their last nine on the road, and that's good enough for me to take the Mets at the minus 105 to minus 110 price in that one. That'll do it for Monday, guys, and I will catch you again on Tuesday morning.